Colossians 1. And verse 20, and we want to we want to sort of begin by, <clears throat> you know, talking about uh, peace in in two different ways. And um, and it is my desire. I'll, I'm I'm going to try to be led of the Lord and in uh, how we proceed with this, but. <clears throat> um, my end result of this sharing today, I, I really don't plan on being super deep or super spiritual. My end result is the desire of my heart. You could almost say the desire of my heart as, um, well, you definitely can say the desire of my heart as a pastor is that you, you find Jesus for yourself, not based on me or this church or but that you, you find Jesus. And, and I don't just mean for salvation or healing or whatever. I mean to know him and to know his heart and to be so attuned with him that we, you flow with him. <clears throat> and I also feel that way. I guess it's Father's Day. I also feel that kind of as a father in the Lord. I think that, um, I mean, I was, um, Ben texted me when he got to Arizona and he just thanked me for all the years that he was here. And, he said, you're my father in the Lord. And, and I, um, I thought, you know, that's really what a father wants to do is to raise up those that are his to know the business. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and our business is knowing the Lord. And, and uh, Ben has, and so has many others, Teague and Carrie up in, in Washington and many others. And... <clears throat> um, so I just want to express my heart today on Father's Day that my heart isn't that I be the, the grand teacher or whatever. My heart is that I, I give you things from the Lord that are seeds and God will develop that in his timing and in your life and in a real way. <clears throat> and so, so part of that includes that you would search the scriptures, that you would be hungry, that you would go after the Lord. And um, somewhere along the way here, I'm going to have uh, Faf um, Rayfield in, in uh, Ireland come over Skype and, and uh, exhort you also along these lines. We're going to have somebody preach at you from Ireland. Get them, Faf. So, <clears throat> but not quite yet. We're going we're gonna to get into our message. Um, <clears throat> so we're in Colossians chapter 1. In verse 20, and we're talking about peace. <clears throat> and there's, there, these scriptures are going to cover peace in two different ways. They're going to begin with uh, this reality of a legal peace. Um, this is a loose translation of what I'm trying to get at, but the phrase a peace treaty, a peace treaty, where there used to be uh, uh, enmity, there used to be two people that were enemies or two groups that were enemies, a peace treaty is signed and there is peace. Now that's not the best picture for what I'm trying to describe and I'll get into that a little more. But for you to understand in terms of um, a contract but more than that, um, a work done that accomplishes peace. And then the second one <clears throat> is Peace within, peace in us, having peace here. And you know, the way this world is and the way things go, <clears throat> you can understand the peace treaty that God has set up between us and God and still not have peace within. You know, you can still struggle with things and wrestle with junk going on and all this kind of stuff and still lack a real peace within. So I want to address both of these. <clears throat> Verse 20, Colossians chapter 1. And having made peace, notice that's past tense. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. <clears throat> okay, just that part right there, first of all. Um, the, there's two key words that are used twice there that we'll, we'll examine later. 
but it is by him, by him. And that is really addressing more than just saying uh, by, Jesus did it. It was by Jesus. He did, a, he did a work only. But literally, literally, the peace that we're going to attain within that is going to be permanent and strong, it, it has to come through this reality of by him. It just has to. <clears throat> but right now, we're talking about the legal work, a legal work, you know. Um, Jesus did do a legal work, and he accomplished it. And, and uh, in doing that work on the cross, according to this scripture, we've been reconciled with God. And now we have peace with God. We are reconciled. And I don't know that we fully understand the meaning of that word. And again, if my goal is to get you to search the scriptures, I probably wouldn't today try to explain it in such a manner that you go, I got it. You... You shared it with me, and I'll never really get it because now you made me think I have it. Does that make sense to anybody? I want you to know the Lord. I don't want you to know Randy's teaching, and that's so big on my heart. <clears throat> all right, so, all right, if peace has been made, then <clears throat> the war should be over, right? I mean, peace is made. God dealt with the situation, and and that's, that's a kind of a key to this first piece is that it's dealing with a situation. The next one we're going to get into is dealing with us. <laughs> but he dealt with the situation, and there is peace. And, <clears throat> and in a certain sense, you could say that the war is over. I mean, um, Jesus sat down, you know, uh, especially when we all, when there's so much teaching about uh, God and the devil are at war and they're fighting for the souls of men and this and that. You know, well, Jesus, if that was the case, Jesus wouldn't have sat down. I mean, at the cross, he said it's finished. He didn't say, he didn't say, well, the first part is finished. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So get ready for the next part, which will take about two thousand years. You know. You know, <clears throat> no, he said it's finished, and then commended his spirit to the Father. And when he rose from the dead, he sat down. And that was an unheard of thing in the tabernacle, which was just a shadow of the reality of God. When Jesus sat down, it says in Hebrews, the work was finished. All right, so <clears throat> there is, but there is that reality. There is a reality of what we call a finished work, but I fear that. Um, I fear that we embrace that by a teaching or theologically, but there is not a full grasp that, you know, God's at rest over this thing. He's not, he doesn't think the devil's going to win because the devil's already defeated. Anybody ever heard that phrase before? The devil is already defeated. You know, he has spoiled, this is right here, just over here in the next chapter. He spoiled principalities and powers and made it show openly of them. <clears throat> that, you could almost say it like this. The battle between God and Satan is over. The battle between us and Satan is not over. We're going to have to enforce that victory. You know, we're going to have to enforce that victory. And so, um, so <clears throat> I was thinking about it in terms of, you know, the Civil War, uh, war going on and whatever. And, and at the very early part of it, it was pretty early along, um, Abraham Lincoln, the president, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This is, you know, the, again, the war hasn't even kicked up really good yet. And he says, okay, slaves are free. Okay, and he signs the thing. It's legal. It's done. Da-da-da-da. Finished. All right? <clears throat> so, in a sense, you could say that the governing power dealt with the situation, but didn't deal with the minds of men. And let's just take, for example, just the slaves themselves. 
just, I mean, the moment that he signed that and the ink dried on it, they didn't just walk out and, you know, everything was free. You know, well, we're free. It didn't happen. And that's the case for many Christians. More importantly than that, that's just a story. That's just history. We're talking about spiritual life. We're talking about God reality. We're talking about that we live as slaves at times. We are, are, <clears throat> are functioning as if the victory hasn't been won. <clears throat> and we, we war in ways <clears throat> that are, um, uh, I'll just say it like this, defensive instead of offensive. But this same book, and this book is full of this, so, but uh, just over um, in the, still in the first chapter, it says, verse 13, um, this is Colossians 1, 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay, so that, that's past tense who has the half delivered, all right? We've been, and I've, I've shared this before, but we've been delivered from the power of darkness, but not from the presence of darkness. But until this becomes ours and is not just a legal document as it were, we will still be doing battle with the enemy trying to win the war, you know trying to win the war. And um, in the Emancipation Proclamation, the, the slaves had to hear of it, but then they had to act on it. Okay. And <clears throat> to hear of it has to be more than, oh, well, somebody said that you're free. Oh, my pastor said I'm free. And if we're free, then why are so many people living in slavery, in spiritual slavery, to the enemy and, and more importantly, to their own carnal minds? And that's, that's where he begins to really deal with this. Back in, uh, uh, still in the first chapter, verse 21, <clears throat> now we move into where he starts dealing with this thing of... Uh, that there is still a war going on, as it were, um, but we're free from it, and it has a conditional thing that we'll look at uh, down a few verses. But first, let's just read verse 21. And you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Okay, so <clears throat> this is viewing this from God's side. You were, in his mind, alienated and enemies but in, from his perspective, you are not just saved, you're family, or greater than family, you're one with Jesus. And what is true of Jesus is true of you. And if you don't, if you've heard that, but you don't, you don't identify in it, then you're going to be fighting these things with carnal weapons. You're just going to be fighting with, with carnal weapons, trying to, to win a war that he's already won. You, you're going to have battles, but the war is won, you know. And so the wording here is <clears throat> significant in you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't talking about Satan. This is, this is talking about a war going on between you and your mind. Right. Um, keep your place here. <clears throat> but over in Ephesians is a similar scripture, and uh, I kind of like it. Ephesians 2. <clears throat> Ephesians 2 and verse 12, it has um, some similarities. It says <clears throat> that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. <clears throat> All right, so it's addressing, uh, 
it's addressing the same thing uh, that we saw in Colossians, except for the wording's slightly different. He says in Colossians that you are alienated and enemies. <clears throat> and here it says that ye were without Christ being aliens. All right, you can go back to Colossians now, chapter 1. <clears throat> You know, I, I know I'm kind of weird sometimes how I look at things. But he's, he's talking about aliens in your mind. <laughs> okay, and I don't know if you see that quite the way I do, but I, I see we got a problem. <laughs> we got little aliens running around in our mind that are saying and doing and thinking and 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 giving us information now of course we don't actually have little space creature that's not what we're talking about <clears throat> but by sort of viewing it that way we see that there is a war going on in our mind with these aliens these th foreign thoughts these foreign ways of seeing things foreign to what foreign to the commonwealth of God, foreign to the mind of God, foreign to the way that the Lord views everything. And so if these aliens are in charge and they're running around, they're going, hey, let's do this, or hey, you know, and you go, oh yeah, let's do this, you know, or oh, I can't do that, I'm, you know, I'm, um, I, I, I don't have the strength, or I, I don't have um, <clears throat> the victory that I need, or all the things that we look at. <clears throat> And we're just being brought under something that really was already defeated. But the thing is, is that Jesus didn't like enter your mind with a little tiny sword and go against little demons with little, in fact, let's not say a sword, let's say a lightsaber, <laughs> with little, little aliens, our thoughts and our ways, and defeat one and then put him down and then defeat another one and then you know five or six around him and he goes you know and they all fall and all this and we go yay Jesus defeated all the aliens in my mind no you know what <clears throat> you're supposed to be you're supposed to defeat those by the cross and by the truth of the cross and by the reality of the resurrection and, and that being more than a historical event that happened 2,000 years ago. But that being your way of thinking without alien intrusion. That the cross and the resurrection and you being seated in Christ be more real to you than these little guys that are running around telling you what should be this way and that way and oh I can't do that and okay I'll do this go yeah go do that you know push yourself forward all the different things that are contrary to the life of Christ that is in our heart that is in our being that is in our core and and he's and the writer here uh, Paul is saying <clears throat> You know, you are an alien in your mind. You're like another planet from God. The way you think, the way you look at things, the way you, you address things, you're not finding where you are. You're not finding who you are. You're not finding, and, and again, you're going to find that by finding Jesus because you're one with Jesus, because you're in Jesus. That's where you are, that's who you are, that's what your substance is now. And your substance, and, and the link, the link between getting out away from the aliens and living in the commonwealth of God, meaning the truth and the true reality of God, is a bridge called faith. It's a bridge called faith. But it's not faith in the way a lot of people preach it. It's not, it is, it is truly, I mean, you know, people call faith, they, they say, well, it's blind faith. <clears throat> but you know, true faith is not blind at all. It sees clearly. Yeah. You know? It sees. 
it sees Christ. And, and that's what you get in uh, Hebrews 11 where it starts talking about all these people of faith. You know, they, they have seen something. You know, it's, it talks about Moses uh, having, and Abraham and all of those, having seen afar off and embraced. And, you know, uh, let's just keep your place here. But let's go look at that real quick so that you can see this uh, bridge that, that these guys are crossing and that maybe we're not crossing. It's over in Hebrews 11. <clears throat> Verse 13 is, is not talking about just Abraham and Sarah. Uh, or no, it's talking about all these people. It says, uh, this is Hebrews 11, uh, 13. These all, these all, all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. For they that say such things plainly declare that they seek a country or a commonwealth or another place. Verse 15, for truly, this is the truth, for truly, if they had a mindful, had to get it, if they had been mindful, if they had a mindful of aliens, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have an opportunity to return. Do you see that? Oh my God, you can't get any more clear than that. They're, what these guys did, now, you know, What's funny is that they all died in faith. And we all die in faith at the cross. If we don't die with Christ, if we, you know, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ liveth within me. If we don't embrace, you know, it's like the cross. Okay, there's the cross. Okay, I'll embrace the cross. And remember, it says, and they embraced it and they were persuaded of it. I will embrace the cross, but only for my salvation. Guess what? You can be saved and still have aliens in your mind. Trust me, I know it. I, I'm looking at some of you. But the, the thing that's going to get the aliens out <clears throat> is when you embrace your debt. Okay, I mean, let me give you a dumb example, but let's just say that, I mean, you could look in the scriptures. You remember that guy that was called Legion in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospels? Full of demons, chock full, baby. He was full of, you know? <clears throat> and do, do you think he had aliens in his mind? <laughs> you know? And, and uh, so, <clears throat> You know, Jesus cast them all out. And when Jesus left that place, he was nice and peaceful and quiet, right? But did you know demons can come back? And Jesus said that. Now, we're not talking about de demons per se. We're talking about a certain truth and a principle. So I'm using this story as this principle. There was another way that that guy could have got rid of all those demons instantly if he died. Because the demons aren't going to go, oh, I, I like just being in this dead body. They, you know, it's like, no, they want to they wanna live in the living. And they want to live in the mind and in the soul and in the emotions and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> well, all of those foreign things, and that's just a physical example of a spiritual truth. That's not the truth that I just said. That's just a, that's not it. From that, see the picture, and the picture is that if we see that we're dead with Christ, then guess what? All of that doesn't have power in you anymore, and my life now is seated at the right hand of God. Does that make sense? I mean, it's scriptural. It's not popular, but it's scriptural. It's from God. <clears throat> All right, so, so the, the Hebrew scriptures, I mean, what a, what a great way of wording that these all died not having received the promises but having seen them, and here's the thing. Here's the thing that makes them written in the hall of faith. 
having seen them afar off and were persuaded this is the truth, okay, and embraced them and confessed that, look, we're not of this commonwealth down here. We're of the commonwealth of God. And they lived contrary. In other words, the aliens, as, as Paul describes in Colossians, the aliens were in their mind, but these people, having died in faith, are persuading something that's not of this earth. So they live in an alien environment, but the alien environment doesn't live in them. You see that? You see that? You, Jesus was that way. He was completely different from everyone else. Complete Jesus didn't go around and go, oh, my God, well, somebody said something bad about me. I think I'll just kill them. You know what I mean? I'm the son of God, and I got power. You know, grease spot. You know, I'll take care of this, you know. People shouldn't be mean to the son of God, you know. Well, that's, there's a problem we have right there. We have another mind. We have an alien, I'm, you know, I'm just playing this up here, but we have an alien in our mind that goes, well, don't worry, anytime somebody does something bad to you, I will speak up and I'll give you some, not, some, some really good ideas of how to get back at them, you know. Jesus didn't, you know, try to get back at him. I mean, I, I was thinking about the, the uh, first of all, the scripture in John 3, but it came from uh, the book of Numbers. And the, the people had sinned and everything, and they had, they had gone against God. And so all these serpents came among them. Can you imagine? You're in your tents and everywhere. Can you imagine the whole camp? Certain, you know, snakes going all over the place, you know? Uh, rattlesnakes and it, who knows what all kind of snakes. They're all poisonous snakes. And the people are all going, oh, my God, they're all getting bit and all this kind of stuff. And so, so God says, uh, here's what we're going to do. I want you to make a brass serpent and put it on a pole. And everyone that looks at that, okay. So, folks, in, in John 3, John is using that picture to describe Christ crucified. And he's saying all of these people rebelled against God. They were, they were going against God's leadership. They're doing all of this stuff in a bad spirit and everything. And all these serpents, which represents the original serpent, you know, come among them and starts putting poison into them. Oh, you're open to this. Here, have some, you know. And they start freaking out, and they're all dying and everything else. So God comes up with an answer. He doesn't go, well, I sent the serpents, and I'm killing you guys because I hate your guts because you're just a bunch of rebels. Instead, Jesus takes upon the nature. He who knew no sin was made to be sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in him. And so, so he says, hang me on a pole and let me bear all that they deserve and let me, the son of God, appear as a serpent. You can't imagine. Let me appear and let me take all that poison in me and let me die for them so that they might live. Who might live? Oh, the poor people that are, that bunch of rebellious, stiff-necked, hard-nosed, backslidden, fence-riding, lukewarm bunch. Yeah, he says, I'm going to die for them. And I'm going to take everything they deserve, you know. But you know what? Jesus, on that, that's a picture of it. On the cross, Jesus took us, not just our sin, to the cross. The Bible says that. Okay, and, but why? We go, well, you know, he hates sin. No, greater than him hating sin, greater than him doing anything that you think he's maybe trying to do to get back at you, he's joining you to the Son of God. 
that ultimately in resurrection you will be safe. You get a small example of that from the scripture. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into him and are safe. Sometimes I slide into in him, you know, oh, I'm in, I just made it, you know. The devil tried to get me out. <clears throat> but I find myself in the strong tower that is Christ. Okay, and so they died in faith. They let their faith bring them to the cross. Hallelujah. And they saw reality that's what it, that's the translation in John 1 14 it says that he came full of grace and truth but the, the word truth there is actually the word reality because we because truth can be like this we can view truth like this okay well we got a bunch of people in this room or a bunch of people in this city or whatever and um, you, you know you have the truth and you have the truth and you don't have the truth and you don't have the truth or whatever and we see sort of a just a mixture of we're, it's, we're not sure who's got what maybe da 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 or whatever but reality is completely separate from that which is not reality and what that which is not reality is not another reality it is not That's right. it is not reality okay well as long as we th we're trying to figure our way through all of this stuff well that's true but what about this and da, 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 da. man the best thing to do is you you know jesus said if you knew me you'd know my doctrine we're trying to figure out the doctrine. We're trying to figure out what's truth. Well, is this true? What's that true? Da, 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 da. We're, we're just wandering around, bouncing off, and we haven't been separated unto reality. And in knowing him who is, who's full of grace and reality, then we're going to know the doctrine. Yes. Then we'll know the truth in that sense. And what did he say? What did Jesus say? If if that's conditional if you continue in my word oh, i read the word really when's the last time was well, just a few minutes ago in church i looked down at my bible well how about excluding sundays during church oh, it's been okay it's been a while but the word have i hid in my heart so yeah, <laughs> it is buried. <clears throat> All right, so back to Colossians. Man, I lost my place. I should have kept it. I went all the way back to Jonah. <clears throat> Colossians. Now, the word there in verse um, 21, and you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, that's Colossians 1.21, the word, the two words wicked works is actually not working, work, wicked works by going and doing something, it's the words wicked workings, meaning the workings of our mind. Okay, can, can you understand that? That it's not, it's not that you're wicked, that this isn't trying, you're, you know, we are apart from the Lord, but this isn't trying to address that you're wicked and that that's why you are alienated. He's saying you're alienated by the wicked workings of your mind. Can I get old me? Amen. <laughs> all right. But notice all of that is past tense to a certain degree, but you get to verse 23 and it says, if you continue in the faith. All right. What faith? That you're dead. 
that Christ is your life, that you're one with him, that you're in the safest place you could possibly be. You've got the best life. Somebody's, you know, you all hear me do this. Every once in a while I'll come up and I'll go, I'll walk up to somebody and I'll go, man, you got it made. And nine times out of ten they'll go, I do, or something like that. You know, I'll go, and then I'll say, yeah, man, you're born again. You're in Christ. You're a son of God. You're, you know, Jesus is your life. My Lord, could you have it any better? You have got it made. Glory. And they kind of go, oh, yeah, praise God, you know. Again, Flags flying at half mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wrong kind of death. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so let's go over to Philippians chapter 4. Just one page over. <clears throat> or two if you're depending on your Bible. Philippians 4 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right. The word keep here is not your usual word for keep. It is the word garrison. Do you know what a garrison is? It's like a fort and a fortress, and a garrison guards that fortress, okay? Okay. So picture... Picture the fort as your mind, all right? And picture God's garrison on the, the fence around it looking. And picture the aliens trying to get in. This could be a movie. <clears throat> That's what it's saying. Now, notice, let's read it again, verse 7. <clears throat> And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> all right. This peace is a garrison. So clearly this peace is different than the peace that most people have because they, their minds and hearts are not being kept. <clears throat> Aliens are getting in. They got holes all over the place. And they're crawling in, creeping in, getting in all sorts of ways. <clears throat> this kind of peace, this peace of this reality of death and resurrection, this reality of John's, one of John, you know, John the Baptist had some great sayings, you know, he must increase and I must decrease. <clears throat> but another one that he said is, he is preferred before me. Or are you talking about in God's eyes he's preferred before you? Yes, that's absolutely true. When is that going to be true in your eyes? Yes. Well, it was in John's eyes, the way that he said it. He's preferred before me. I'm not worthy. To, you see that? He's not theologically saying he's preferred. He's going, you know what? <clears throat> Jesus before me. Yes. Okay? Well, then you take that to the, <clears throat> the fullest extent. Later on. He says, Behold the Lamb of God. I mean, he said it twice. The first time he said it, this is in John 1, 29. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. <clears throat> but the second time is later. It's another day. And he's standing around. John is standing around with his disciples. Disciples. See, that's not, that's not people that need salvation to take away the sin of the world. That's disciples that are with John, and they've been, <clears throat> they've been hearing about Jesus from John. What have they been hearing? He's preferred before me. He must increase. <clears throat> we must decrease. You see that flow? And this is what he's teaching these disciples. So finally, <clears throat> this is the last moment, and he sees Jesus walking. See, walking. This is your walk. He, th this isn't the, like verse 29. This is verse... 35, he sees Jesus walking, and he sees his walk, and he sees something in his walk that is different, and he says, behold the Lamb of God. That's for disciples. That's for your walk. That's not for salvation. Behold the Lamb of God. Then they saw it afar off because they're over here with John. All the Jesus they had gotten up to that point was from John. Was John a good man? Did he 
give them the word? Yes, but they needed to hook up with Jesus themselves. <clears throat> so John, in a wonderful manner, says, <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. And John's disciples left him and followed Jesus. <clears throat> wonderful. Glorious. And then, you know, in another place, they, they came to, to John, and they said, <clears throat> you know, John, you, you, your ministry was first. You were doing so good, and people liked you and all this stuff, and, you know, but now more people are following Jesus. And he said, the, he said look, yeah. He said, he said the, the, the friend of the bridegroom, he's just trying to get the bride to the groom. Not to himself. I mean, I've been a best man in a, in a lot of weddings, actually. Especially in my BC days. <clears throat> and uh, a couple of them, I didn't, the girl, I didn't know. I knew the friend, but they asked me to be the best man later on. So, <clears throat> so the groom walked up with the girl and said, uh, this, is, this is Randy, he's, my be he's the best man. I said, if I'm the best man, you need to come with me, girl. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right. So keep, uh, it, it's, they are, here's what I saw with this. I know this runs along the same line. That this peace are, is like peacekeepers. You know, the peace, you know, are, are the, the, who is it? The. UN, yes, United Nations. <clears throat> we send in these, NATO, yeah, we send in these peacekeepers and they are doing, they're not representing one nation so everybody can get mad at them. They represent a bunch of nations, okay? <clears throat> and they're keeping the peace. But here's what I saw with that. We're not peacekeepers. We're not called to be peacekeepers, but that's what we're always trying to do in our minds. We're trying to keep the peace. We're trying to go, okay, I rebuke you or, you know, whatever, you know, go back to your other planet, alien or whatever, you know, all sorts of battles that we're going through and all this kind of stuff. But we think it's up to us. And we think that, you know, well, something must be wrong with me because the, the aliens are still here and all this kind of stuff that we go through. We're not the peacekeepers. <clears throat> there is a peace. There, can I say it like this? There exists a peace that does not only keep your mind, but keeps your heart. Okay? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> now, I jotted down what kind of peace. This peace has to do with the body of Christ. It has to do with being one. <clears throat> All right, so I wanna, I wanna just read uh, a couple of scriptures here. Uh, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. <clears throat> Starting with verse, uh, well, verse 17 and 18 first. Now, here's, here's what I'm asking. <clears throat> I'm going to read it, but I'm going to ask that you search the scriptures later to try to really see what this is saying. <clears throat> All right, verse 17 and 18. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth Walk not as other Gentiles walk, meaning alien minds, <clears throat> in the vanity of what? Their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated <clears throat> from the life of God. What are they alienated from? Are they alienated from salvation? No. He's saying, you don't be this way. He's talking to Christians. You don't be this way. Okay, the life of God through what? 
ignorance that is where? In them, because of the blindness of their heart. Okay. <clears throat> now, that's what he's trying to he's he's trying to deal with, okay? Again, this alien attack that is in our minds. <clears throat> but look at what he gives as the answer. Look at the verses right in front of this because he gave the answer first, verse 15 and 16. But speaking the truth in love may grow up, this is his desire, that we may grow up into him in all things who is the head, even Christ. He's talking to Christians. <clears throat> From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. All right? Now let's go to back to Colossians, which is just over just a bit. Colossians 1 again. And I want to reread <clears throat> um, <clears throat> part of this. Verse 21 and 22. Colossians 1, 21, 22. And you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked workings, by the wicked workings of your mind, yet now hath he rec reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. <clears throat> All right, and then finally, back to Philippians 4. And we'll read a few more verses that were there. Philippians 4, 7. <clears throat> and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatever things be on, are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, so do, and the God of peace shall be with you. <clears throat> Remember, peace within is conditional upon recognition of certain realities, not just truths, teachings. It's a certain reality that God has. You don't get that just by listening to somebody. You're going to get that by seeking the Lord with all your heart. Okay? <clears throat> but he adds here. And look, it, right after it says, and this garrison will keep you. And finally, by the way, it's kind of like, and finally, brethren, what things are true, what things are honest. In other words, whether that's within the Lord or what is true of God in you or what is true in others, think on these things. Think on this. Don't dig up the dirt. Don't, don't think on these things when it comes to you, but the dirt when it comes to them. More importantly, in the Lord, whatever is true, whatever is reality, whatever, think on that and the God of peace. Then it's the God of peace. Then it's the God of peace. But, you know, fixing to put Rayfield on here, but, but, and I, uh, I wanted her to share with you from Ireland because Rayfield's been in the Word and, she's, and she knows that she needs to get hold of this. And I just want you to hear from somebody else. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, the Bible says, let every word be established. And <clears throat> to think that this voice is coming to us all the way across the pond. You know what I mean? Right now, they're in Ar she's in Ireland right now. And all the way across the pond, and there's any number, but we could go for a long time. I and mean, we'd go all the way to Finland, you know, if we had to. But, but right now, let's, let's just hear uh, what Rayfield has to say. Um, 
Hi folks, I've written just a few things down um, so I'll come across clearer, clearer I hope. Um, um, well, I just want to even just say what even Randy was saying. It's just like even everything the Lord, sh the thoughts, even the thoughts you're having, I have, you know, against somebody else. It's just dross. It's just dross, and he got rid of it. But anyway, Genesis 24:13. I stand at the well of the water. Uh, Genesis 24:13. See, I stand at the well of the water. He is constantly standing. Um, by the well of the water to reveal Jesus in the waters of the word. When um, I heard the Holy Spirit was going to open the word more, more to um, the body in, in yourselves, New Creation Fellowship, I knew I was part of you as we all are here on Skype. So I thought to myself, the Holy Spirit is going to open the word, um, the well of the word to me too. So I started reading knowing the Holy Spirit was standing there waiting to show me Isaac and knowing that there was just nothing else to be doing but to be in the word. Mm. So I just, I just started reading. I, um, I was just there um, and I know just knowing that this was a time when the Holy Spirit was just going to be there by the well and opening up the word to us. Um, I just started continuing there, and I started in Genesis 24, and the Holy Spirit started sharing it with me. But I started to continue in the Word. I was there like for five hours a day, knowing there wasn't anything else to do. But more importantly, there's nothing special about me. Just knowing that the Lord was—it's just a time when He is outpouring, like outpouring His Spirit. I don't know what the word is. Just when He's just opening the Word to us. It's like um, I was we're all I was just we're all I was on a horse and I fell into a hole but the hole was the Grand Canyon and we all have that view we're all on the same horse and um and the Grand Canyon is Jesus and um so I didn't really sleep or anything you just have to look at it all the time and um so then um so I just did things like I went over like recent sharings um with the Holy Spirit and I start to see that what the the dove was landing on is the same as what the scriptures were landing on, and that it wasn't something um, different or far away the scriptures, but it was something the Holy Spirit was there all the time, and um, um, and he, it just says in Genesis twenty four sixty two, now Isaac had returned from going to the well of the living one who sees me. And um, I just saw the care of Isaac, who's looking into the well, the same well that we're looking into. And um, he sees that we're looking in there with the Holy Spirit to see Isaac. And um, the father is happy mm. um, for us to be there. And, um, and I was just, just, I even went over the scriptures. What I, he's getting me to do as well is to go over the scriptures, like the sharings I listen to is like Randy and... Um, and it's not what Randy says. It's like it's like I made a determination. This is between me and the Holy Spirit. If I'm going to get Jesus, I'm going to have to go on this journey with the Holy Spirit to see Jesus. And um, it's nothing special about me. It's just like, Holy Spirit, you have to do it. And I know he's been sent to show me Jesus. So I said, okay, off you go. And it's like when John um, lost his disciples, if you want to see it that way, to uh, Jesus, the first thing the disciples said is like, um, where do you, where do you live? Um, that's the first thing he said. And he said, come and see. And so they went and dwelt with him there. And um, it's, that's just all for us. And um, it's just to go over the scriptures that are like said in the sharings and the, the things that the Holy Spirit, that Randy or, you know, the Holy Spirit lands on that is shared around those scriptures. So when we read those scriptures in Colossians, or Ephesians or in John, we go through over those things that Dove lands on and he makes it real in our hearts and he makes the scriptures more real in us. And it's, I found that really helpful. And I found, I find it really encouraging and helpful that you're all doing that. And it's just that it's all for us. We're all doing it one, we're all helping each other when we're in the word. And it's not something selfish, do you know what I mean? And um, I just thank you. And that's all I have to say and thank you. That's all. Well, I really, really like that. <clears throat> um, 
not to re-preach what she said, but that's just so good. I mean, in verse 11, it said, um, or verse 12, um, No, it was verse 13. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. The holy, you know, that's Eliezer. Abraham, the father, sent Eliezer, the servant, to bring back a bride to his, for his son, Isaac. And so he, so the Holy Spirit shows up at the well. And, of course... The, it talks about the washing of the water of the word, and it's the word of God. And at the well, we drink of the eternal realities of the Lord, the living water. <clears throat> so he shows up there, and he's standing there just as the people come, and just the, it, didn't, it wasn't everybody. It was just the right person. He was at the right well, in the well, the word of God. And he was, the Holy Spirit's like standing by the word of God for us. And going, I'm just waiting for somebody that wants to come drink from this well, you know. And so, so someone shows up. <clears throat> and, and he begins a journey bringing her heart into that. And then uh, uh, verse 62, this is later. This is, this is after a little while that, uh, that the Holy Spirit and her have been together. And then verse 62, and Isaac came from the way of the well. He starts coming forth from the way of the word to her. And the next verse says, and the camels were coming, bringing her all the way from Haran to him. And all of a sudden, the bride's been hearing all this stuff the Holy Spirit's sharing, and all of a sudden, he starts coming forth. He comes from the way of the well. Wow. That's just really good stuff. Wow. Faf? My Lord, you've been in the Word. That is edifying. Glory to God. Let's stand together and we'll just close out with a word of prayer. What a wonderful sharing that was right there. I should have just turned her on at the beginning. And... Yes. a certain amount of ministers that just like setting themselves on a pedestal and and trying to get everybody to depend upon them <clears throat> and like you're saying that's not the lord i mean eve was deceived because she got the word of god through someone else instead of directly from the lord that's what carolyn was was just saying and um you know i think anyone who sets themselves up on a pedestal uh, is asking to be brought down and God will do it because our role as a pastor and as a minister is to sort of be out of the way but help people to get to the Lord and then and then back off and let them love the Lord and 
And uh, that's my greatest heart's desire. And uh, that's, you know what, if, if, you, if you wanted to ever give me a Father's Day gift, that would be a good one. Just go after Jesus with all your heart. That would, that would be the happiest gift of all. Yes. And on that flip side, though, we put that person on the pedestal, which happens an awful lot, too. That person is doing exactly what the Lord has told them. He's, and they are proclaiming the word. But because we're not willing to take that time to do that relationship, we will put them in the pedestal. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's got nothing to do with what they're trying to do. But it's got to do with us. And then when they fall, which, I mean, they will. They have their faults. Then we totally come against them and pick up them once again because we don't have a lot Amen. Well, I would try to communicate all that to you, but <clears throat> Carolyn said something about, boy, the Irish just aren't getting it, are they? <laughs> not, not really. She didn't say that. She didn't say that. She was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day, and we love you so much. We love your son. We love Jesus. And Father, I just pray for each and every one of us that we just build a new hunger and lord we go to the well father we go to the well we don't just walk around hungry we go to the well and not just drink of that well but 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 father that we meet the holy spirit there and that we ask the holy spirit to bring forth the son from the way of the well Father, it just was so wonderfully shared. And we ask you, Lord, to just bless this word to our hearts and quicken it and, and quicken us to, to, to go after you, Jesus, with all of our heart. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, why don't you go around and hug a few people and tell them you love them. Amen. We're dismissed.